Hey, what's up, studs? My name is Ryan or Eminor Productions, and this is one of the last LEGO Star Wars sets of 2018. In fact, it's the last one that is slated to release in 2018, to my knowledge. It is a 75230 Porg. It has 811 pieces and will set you back $70, which actually isn't bad for 811 pieces if you're one of those people that cares a lot about the price per piece. But the set itself is actually a little bit smaller than I was expecting, especially based on the box art. Just looking at the box art, you think the thing's going to be huge. But when you get out of the box and you build it, it's actually about the same height as the BB-8 model. Of course, it's a bit thinner, though, because it's not a spear like the BB-8. But the Porg itself is a solid-looking model. It has one major inaccuracy, which we'll get to later on in the review. But for now, I'll quickly note that the instructions are nothing special. They're just regular binded Lego instructions. They are Lego instructions. What do you expect? Anyway, the box itself is really nice. It has the Porg center stage there on Octu Island, or at least what I would assume is Octu Island. And then looking on the side, you have the really cool... I love the side box art that Lego's been doing for the last few years with Lego Star Wars sets. And then looking around back, you're going to have the backside of the Porg. It shows the one main function of the Porg, and we'll show that feature off here in a moment. And then, of course, you have the Porg down there on the bottom right with his display stand, which is actually something cool that Lego does with this set. So I'm going to answer a question here real quick that a lot of you guys probably have. Is this set UCS? Is this set what is now MBS? or does it fall under neither? And it's a tough question to answer. It's really subjective because LEGO doesn't really say anything on the subject, but I'm gonna go off the basis of that the UCS R2-D2 that came out in 2012, I believe, was UCS. It had a plaque, had the R2-D2 on the side, and that was considered a UCS set at the time. Then when BB-8 came out in 2017, it also had a plaque. It was the same style as R2-D2, except LEGO didn't call it UCS, but I still wanna call it UCS. I still think it's UCS. Now we have something really weird here in the Porg. The Porg is an animal. It's not a robot, it's not a droid, it's not Yoda or Darth Maul headbust, which of the only non-ship UCS sets really that have ever existed, more like character-based UCS sets, and that's kind of an odd category, but we'll live with it. But this is what I would consider a UCS Porg. As far as I'm concerned, this is UCS, and the way I would denote that is that if it has a plaque, it's UCS, end of story. If it has a plaque, that makes it UCS automatically. So not all UCS sets have a plaque, but all sets with a plaque I would consider to be UCS. Okay, except for those figures up there. I know they have like a little plaque thing with their name on it. That's not a that's not a plaque plaque. I'm talking about like an info plaque, like on the pork here. You know what I mean? So if they have a plaque like that, it's a UCS set in my opinion. Vote on the screen right now. I'm curious, what do you guys think? Is the Porg UCS? Should it be called? Honestly, it should probably be called MBS, Master Builder Series. That's a new term that LEGO gave to Cloud City. But for now, they don't really call it anything and I'm gonna call it UCS. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the one minifigure, if you wanna call it a minifigure, that's included in this set. And it is, of course, a Porg. What a shocker. The Porg that is included, or at least the minifigure size Porg that is included, is very small, obviously. It is smaller than a minifigure. It's not really a minifigure, it's just kind of a mini Porg build. And the Porg itself is the same as the one we get in Octo Island and the Millennium Falcon, just like you get the color variations, obviously, between the different sets. But this is basically the same. You have the same printed head with a different colored body than you see on like the UCS Millennium Falcon. I think it's exactly the same as what we have in Octo Island, but it might be slightly different. Just for a quick comparison, the one from the Millennium Falcon has all black feathers, I suppose, versus this one, which is a little bit of a lighter color. But this has practically everything you'll probably ever want to know about the Porg, especially if you hate Porgs. I particularly like Porgs, but I know there's a lot of people out there that hate Porgs and think Disney just made them to sell merchandise. I can understand your point of view, but I don't really care. I think they're kind of a cute addition to the Star Wars universe, which is something you don't really have outside of Padme, Leia, or Rey. Anyway, we have the home planet, which is Octu. We have the habitat, which are the coastal cliffs that we see Luke inhabit also. We have attributes, which are the webbed feet, waterproof feathers, and natural curiosity. Ooh. And then, of course, we have his diet, which is small fish. And lastly, color varieties, gray, white, brown, and orange. All of those colors we find on this particular Porg. Anyway, there's also a nice little blue version of the Porg there on the right. Of course, he doesn't actually come in that color, but I guess someone could build him in blue. That would kind of be cool to see, but the stand's pretty straightforward. It's a simple design. I'm glad they didn't go the way of BB-8 last year where they made the stand be able to hold the giant BB-8. It didn't work for me. Well, let's take a look at our giant Porg looming off in the distance, ready to eat some small fish. For the Porg itself, we're going to work our way from the top down. Of course, we have some giant black eyes in this guy. And I think that works really well because if you remember in the movie, like he just has these 
cute giant eyes that you know you look at and they just have this like loving or you know just this very innocent look i think is the best way to put it and i think this does a decent job of capturing that look there's some orange feathers around the side of his head on both sides which i don't know i think they recreate the look of the pork right quite well i think the only thing missing would be maybe some white details splattered in there kind of like you have on the smaller version because it's a print and it's probably a little bit easier to fit that in there but other than that solid look on the sides and the front of the face he does have the like i don't know i want to call it like a mustache like handlebar mustache to him and the mouth can open you can see some teeth and basically they use red so it looked like it was the inside of a mouth or at least the best they could uh, do with that you can notice the wings open we'll get to that feature in a moment when i open the mouth there you see the back side of the head they use this uh rock working piece or at least what i believe is to be a rock working piece it looks like it belongs in like power miners in my opinion although i think it's newer than that it's like a newer piece but it is kind of a cool piece it actually worked really well on this model they used it a lot and i thought uh Thought it might have been overused uh, looking at the pictures, but when you have this thing in hand, they actually do a great job of shaping this thing and making it look like it has some real uh, depth to it and such. You'll see they use some black ones down here as well for his tail feathers, which is quite nice as well. And they use some slopes down here as well for the, the extension of the tail, which actually works quite well. You'll find some cheese slopes thrown about on the porg as well, light gray, dark gray, and a couple black ones here on the tail again. The wings themselves are very simple designs. They aren't uh, too fancy. They're pretty thin, actually. And this is about as far up as you can pull them. That is as far as the wings will go out. So they don't go all the way out to 90 degrees. They go like 30 degrees, maybe 40 degrees. Nothing crazy, unfortunately. And they also have this nice blue color, which is just, just a very small highlight. It's the only two pieces on the set that are in this color. And it's right there. And you're going to find the same on the other side. So it's actually quite a symmetrical build as well. Other than like the rock work on the back, like most of the, the basic uh, function and design of the porg is symmetrical which is kind of nice so like i mentioned earlier his mouth is open and the way to do that is you're just going to push down on this tail and it opens the mouth it's like it's pretty straightforward all you have to do is push right on down on that it'll stop right there it doesn't go any farther than that the wings however when you use this function don't open as much as they do um, when you're not using that function so here we use the function we push down on it and it opens but you can still pull these out a lot farther. So it's kind of a shame that the wings don't go out that much when he opens his mouth. Like, it's kind of lame, actually. Like, I'm not a huge fan of them not being able to complete that function, but I don't really know what the issue in there is with that, that they can't open the whole way that they're supposed to be able to, but it is what it is. The belly of this guy is huge. He has a giant, giant belly, but uh, I don't know what else to really expect here. I think this is kind of the worst part of the Porg right in here. Like, it just kind of looks like a hodgepodge of crazy white sloped pieces and they tried to get the shaping as good as they could and i think they did a decent job but it's still in my opinion is the worst part of the set it's just this like belly area and i don't know i don't know what they could have done with it but uh it just it's one of those things that's really hard to get right in lego because it just most lego things are ships like you can see in the background like you get starships and spaceships and you, you know things like that Versus this, which is a furry creature, and that's a lot harder to capture than a, a giant metal freighter or something along those lines. But the, the main complaint I think most people have is the feet. And that's just because they're inaccurate to what you see in the movie. The feet are actually supposed to be, like, long, and you're supposed to stand on them. They're definitely not supposed to uh, touch with the bottom of his belly like that. So the legs are supposed to be a little bit longer there, but obviously they would not be supportive enough to hold the porg up, especially because of how uh, back heavy is. So if the, the legs were longer, the thing would just fall back every time so lego did a great job with a, a little compromise there and i think it worked out pretty well it doesn't look terrible if, you, if you're not paying attention to it i think it just works good enough and it passes his his feet are made out of orange pieces and there's little toes there or toenails with the the black pieces underneath which i think looks decent enough on the underside you'll find they use some inverse tiles to kind of round that off and hold everything together underneath again his toes are individually posable if you really want to move his toes around i suppose uh the one qualm i have with this design is that underneath here you can already tell i've only had this for a day it is starting to put some wear and tear on the inverse tiles and you can't tell it on this white one as much but in person not on camera but in person you can see some scratching going on there as well so the points of contact on the bottom of this thing are going to take some wear and tear don't look at the bottom of this thing if you don't want to see those but 
other than that, uh, there's there's no other major complaints for me with this set. It's just a nice little display piece. It's a cute little display piece. It's probably the cutest Lego Star Wars set ever. And I'm going to compare it to BB-8 in a second. I just want to talk one more thing about the design of this board, or more so the way that it is built and put together. So Lego actually builds out the inside with Technic first. So that's like what you build first, and then you have a bunch of Technic pins on the sides of it. And then you basically build a bunch of, you use plates, and then you build a bunch of things that go on the outside of that uh, basically rectangular squarish base of an interior for this really really simple so then you build like the belly panel and that'll go right onto the front of it it'll stick right on very nicely just like that you see how that's the side panel uh, but yeah it sticks right on it works really well they did a great job designing uh the set with the way you build it and then you can just get an idea of the way this set is built i just wanted to mention how this set is built because i found it very interesting i think lego made some really good choices with the instructions here and they just made it really simple to build so these are your two current choices for buildable characters from the star wars universe you have the porg on the left and the bb-8 on the right 70 and 100 dollars respectively i just wanted to give you guys a quick comparison of these two i'm going to bring over r2d2 in a second but essentially these these two sets are from the same vein or the same idea or concept for a Lego set. It's just character from the, the movies. It's kind of cool. Both sets have different features. Of course, with BB-8, you can have him roll his head around. And then you can also have him, if we flip it over, have the little fiery uh, lighter thumbs up, which is a really cool feature as well. So the set with more features is going to be BB-8. But the set with maybe the cuter look is going to be the Porg. I want you to vote on the card right now. On the top right, vote on the card. Which set is cuter? What is the cutest LEGO Star Wars set? Like, I don't think there's anything cuter than one of these two. Maybe if you really love R2-D2. You can vote for him too, I suppose. But he's just towers over the rest of them, as you can tell. I would say the Porg or the BB-8 are one of the cutest LEGO Star Wars sets ever. Again, vote on the card right now on the top right of the screen. You can vote R2-D2, BB-8 the Porg, or other. And if it's other, leave in the comment section down below. But I can't really think of anything that would be cuter than the Porg or the BB-8. Anywho, there's your comparison of all three of them next to each other. You get an idea of the size comparison. I believe the R2-D2 was 180 bucks. And then, of course, BB-8 100 and the Porg 70. So you can see the value there uh, definitely matches across the board with what you seem to get for each set. And just so you know, I believe the BB-8 is in scale with the R2-D2, but I'm not sure about what scale the Porg fits in with the BB-8 and R2-D2. It might be just about the right scale. It might just be a little bit too big there. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to give the Porg a 9 out of 10. I think LEGO did a great job executing on this set. I think they made some fair compromises, especially down around the feet. Um, other than that, I'm a a little bit disappointed with the wing function with the tail on the back like these just don't open enough they open like this far when you push the tail down versus this far if you just pull it out so i'm a little bit disappointed in that but other than that i think it's a great set for 70 bucks i'm totally going to recommend that one to anyone who liked the last jedi or likes porgs in general if you hate the last jedi and you hate porgs obviously this is not the set for you you don't have to hate on the set you don't you know what i mean so just let it be let other people enjoy it but if you like it go out and get it if you don't like it don't buy it buy something else put your money elsewhere that's all right too anyway i hope you did enjoy my review of the porg and the quick comparison to the BB-8 and R2-D2. Man, that R2-D2 is just massive. Like, it doesn't look like it when it's on its own. But when you put R2-D2 in front of the Porg and BB-8, he just towers over them. It's kind of crazy. I never really realized how big he was, again, to have these things. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, like the video. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you have any opinions on the set, leave in the comment section down below. Peace out.